Hey guys, it's Cassie again here and I have another good review for you guys. Sorry it's been a long time since I posted a video. It's been very busy. I work in retail normally so for holiday it was super busy and the month of January has been pretty busy actually. I've had a lot of appointments. I've been working a lot so it's hard to fit in um, but I'm still trying to fit in time to read and hopefully I can get a consistent schedule so that's still my goal um, but anyway I finally got a chance to read one of the art copies that I received from NetGalley so thank you again NetGalley for letting me um, have a review of all the books that you've given me so far and the one that I'm going to talk about today is called The Dreamers by Karen Thompson Walker so this is not the real cover because this was the cover they gave us in the art copy, which I have right here on my tablet. Um, but it's like the same thing, except on the bottom, I think it's like a cityscape um, and it's like a light blue and then it just looks like the outline of a cityscape. Um, so that's more of what the book looks like now that it's been published for, I think it's been over a week now that it's been published and on shelves. So it's a new release. Um, but it is a novel um, that is set in a town called, I think it's Santa Arrow. Um, I can't even remember what it is, like Santa Lear. Um, but it's set in a fictional town where in that town, people mysteriously start falling asleep and staying asleep. And it is a virus that just keeps you asleep. It kind of looks like you're sort of dead but you're not really you're still breathing you still have pulses but you end up dying from the disease because your breathing starts slowing and a lot of people just don't end up waking up from it but it follows a whole bunch of characters in this town that are dealing with this virus you have college students that um the virus starts on the college that is there in that town so you see a whole bunch of college students dealing with this virus happening um you meet a couple teachers that work for the college you meet a doctor who goes to that town to treat um, for the virus and it's she's more of a psychiatrist is what her field is in but she was called down there and you also see I believe you see a couple who moves there who they're not struggling in their marriage but they're reaching a rough patch and you kind of see that as it goes on in the book like where their frustrations are of having to move to this town but you end up having this them and then next door is two girls and their father that are dealing with the virus so those are pretty much a lot of the characters and then you do see as you go along the different characters intermingling and how they fit into the storyline and there's a lot of twists and turns um but it's such a fun read um so I'm going to say right now, if you do not want spoilers, just turn the video off, um, wait until you finish the book, and then come back and get to hear all the fun stuff. Because it's really hard to talk about this book um, without kind of spoiling things. So Santa Laura, that's what it is. The town is called Santa Laura, and it's in California. So <laughs> sorry, that's what I was kind of looking up so I could get it right. So it's um, set in Santa Laura, California. Um so with this book like i said it's based around this virus that makes you fall asleep um and like i said before a lot of the patients end up dying um it's kind of scary if you think about it um how it's set up is this virus is kind of like airborne it kind of just spreads and it affects certain people so you see some people that get the virus later on and then you see kind of people that get it right away um but just the characters in this book were very well developed even though you only got to meet some of them for like a little bit of time you still felt like you knew who they were pretty much without having to get more information and feeling like you need to learn more um and there was like two characters that i really did not like um one of the characters his name is matthew he is one of the college students that is in the book um and he is a part of when in the campus that is affected by the virus. You see him being introduced kind of slowly um, with another character. Her name is May. May is kind of this quiet college girl. She kind of keeps to herself. She pretty much went to this college um, based on, I think it was like what her like what her mother was able to like let her do. Um, 
and just like she's in this new kind of place that she's not familiar with she's not familiar with anyone there so you kind of see her just kind of like keeping to herself staying in the background um and you meet matthew through she's i think she's like sitting in like the the college door like um i guess it's like the common area before you get to like the dorm rooms that some of the colleges have um so she's there like reading and matthew is jogging up and down this hallway um and in the book you read that he does that a lot um and they call him weird matthew which is very interesting the fact that that is what they call him but it makes a lot of sense there's a lot of different things that happen in the book they're just like this is odd um reasons i don't like him in my opinion and i don't know how to make it any cleaner than what i'm going to say he's a douche <laughs> he is um, you find out later on that he is the son of a very successful pharmaceutical company and it's kind of a twist because you find him in like not really the beginning of the book but as him and May get to know each other that he hates big pharma he's against them he thinks that there's that they're holding something back in, to the United States about the virus and just in general um, so it's a little twist when you find out oh he's kind of being hypocritical because he's from a pharmaceutical family that has made their money that way um, but it's just that kind of was just like ugh. but then at the same time as him and may get to know each other there's a romance that develops and it's very frustrating to me because he kind of like doesn't think that she's gonna get attached to him um, especially with her being a quiet girl and she ends up you know having a discussion with him about the fact that you know she's feels this way about him he's like see you're getting too attached to me this is what I was worried about I'm I'm not attached to you in any way and it just it breaks your heart <laughs> it's like he just kind of played with her and just you know he wasn't really interested in her at all and it just kind of shatters her um and I just I really felt sorry for her and May was one of the characters that I really like because I'm kind of that quiet girl if you don't know me I kind of am this quiet person and then I kind of like loosen and bring out my shell with people that I trust. And I felt like she just really thought that he was someone that was going to be there for her. Um, and in heartbreaking news, uh, May ends up falling ill with the virus. And you think that Matthew's going to kind of come around and realize maybe this is a girl that I should, you know, get to know. And I ha kind of have feelings attached for her. He still doesn't. And there's um, something that happens in the book that pretty much he abandons May and she assumes that he's the caretaker and is going to take care of her. And it's just really sad because what happens she ends up not waking up from and she ends up dying from. And it just broke my heart because you see that Matthew kind of like reaches out to her and wants to save her. But then he decides not to and it, it, I don't know for me I just thought it was very very douchey to do of the fact that he pretty much was like I'm not gonna risk my life to save her um, but then he ends up doing something else that kind of redeems himself but I'm not gonna uh, spoil that at all he ends up kind of doing something that redeems him but at the same time it I still don't like him for it um, but yeah that's kind of a little bit of why I don't like Matthew and then the other character I don't like is the two good little girls' father. Um, so he, I think what you read in the beginning is he works as a janitor at the college and he's there when the outbreak happens. And you realize he's like a doomsday prepper where he has like a basement where it's just full, like stockpiled of goods, um, food, um, medical supplies, bullets stuff like that that he's gonna need for the end of the world and you see that these um two girls grow up these two sisters grow up in this um knowing that their dad has been doing this for a while now um i think it's their mom passed away so their mom's not in the picture um but you see these two sisters kind of like struggling um because towards i think it's like the middle of the book their father be becomes ill and they get scared that they're gonna be taken away so they call the police they hide out and then they end up staying in the house i think for like three weeks is what it is they're in the house alone for three weeks just um 
depending on the supplies that their father left and they have these kittens so they have kittens to keep them company but it just seems very scary especially since there's not a lot of people in their town because a lot of people that were in there have fallen sick because of the virus um and you just see their kind of their relationship and there's a lot of funny moments um with the girls that I really um really liked and it kind of like brought a little humor into the dark situation um but yeah for the reason I didn't like him he just seemed like like he was too focused on that doomsday kind of thing and I'm I'm not I mean I'm I'm someone who does worry about like what would happen if there is the end of the world but I know that I'll be able to figure it out he pretty much is just like on it like he thinks something's gonna happen and I don't know like I feel like he loves his girls but at the same time I didn't get that from him and that's kind of what I wish I could have got from him was just that he did you know show his affection a little bit to them especially since their mother passed away um it's I don't know just something about him and I don't know if I'm the only one who's gonna feel that way I just felt like reading his character I just was like I didn't care for him um but I really loved May like I said May reminds me of myself a little bit um there was the couple which even though their story I've never experienced before because I haven't been married I do know like what the ups and downs of a relationship can be and I love the married couple um I love the little baby that they have and I just I love how you see more of the father interacting with the baby because I feel like we don't get to see that a lot in fiction I feel like a lot of baby interactions are with the mother and the father just kind of is not part of that so I really like the fact that it was him kind of interacting with his child and him developing his relationship with his baby and I don't know I just I loved it and just his just how he survived during the whole sickness period was really cool um, probably not really cool but just the fact that it was different I haven't read anything like that before um, but yeah, I just, I don't know. I just love the writing style of this book. This book dives right in um, instead of having like a slow build where, oh, we're going to introduce all these characters and then we're going to have a problem and then we're going to get to the reason this book is, um, what this book is about. Um, it's just right there. So you see someone falls sick right away um, and you just kind of like, it just progresses from there where one person gets sick and then there's a couple people that get sick and then this character comes in and then something else happens and then you have more characters come in so I like that and I think that's why I kind of delved into the story because it's it's already starting and I want to know what happens pretty much so I pretty much read this book in like three days I just couldn't put it down and the only reason I put it down was because I either was at work or I was um with my boyfriend so it was like the only every time I had free time to read I was reading this book um, so I would definitely um, give this book a five out of five stars um, and I'm just looking forward to reading anything else by uh, Karen it's her writing is just amazing like I said I love the fact she just jumps right into it doesn't beat around the bush and it's something I it's a book I think that kind of makes you think in a way that this could be something that could possibly happen one day and it's kind of scary to think that that could happen one day but I don't know I just like the fact it just it just makes you think like what would you do if you were in that situation and how what would you do to um I guess not protect yourself but kind of like help during that time and just how would you deal pretty much with a sickness that could pr pretty much hit you and you wouldn't know it um but yeah I just I really adore this book so it is out it's been out I think since last Tuesday so everybody go and pick it up I highly recommend it you're not going to be disappointed and I don't know I think that's all I want to say about it it's pretty much everything else that I think about it's just a lot of repetition of what I've just said but definitely go pick this up um like I said it is called The Dreamers by Karen Thompson Walker so all right uh, I hope everybody has a good, wonderful day, um, and I'm hoping to post a new video here in the next couple of days, maybe in a week, um, for a couple more reviews that I have. So, until next time, bye guys.